Good morning. You're watching Much Ado About Something today, and I'm Donna. Well, I'm in the backyard this morning, back here checking out the animals and seeing what needs to be done about the little garden. Uh, Madeline and I are hanging out this morning. She's hanging out with me. We went up to my uh, sister's yesterday and had a, a wonderful day in the mountains. She gifted, her and her husband gifted us with that yesterday. Donald's been on staycation this week. He's staying at home, but he's on vacation. And this is already the third day of his vacation. We thought that we would get more done, but we haven't. And I haven't been able to film like I normally would because there's just been so much going on. We've been spending time with each other, spending time with the grandchildren, just trying to get a few things done around here, which hasn't equaled to much at all. But we are uh, inviting you back today. Glad that you're joining us. Like always, you're welcome. If you're new here, you're welcome, and if you're coming back, we're always glad to see you come back. I'm out here this morning. There's a lot of birds, and uh, just seeing what needs to be done. We did have another little uh, bundle of babies, a little bundle of rabbit babies while we were uh, away yesterday. They were born. We noticed all the hair and the wiggling going on in the cage, so we're excited about that, having new little bunnies. Um, it's quiet. It's a quiet morning here, all except the birds. You know, you can always hear the birds at my house. <laughs> Maddie, good morning. Can you get inside the trampoline? Can you go inside? Good morning. One of the things that I, ha I can point out is the elderberries that we planted here near the fence. Right here's the... Um, what's left of the one right here and then the rest of them the chickens just ate down to stems which is what we wanted them to do we did want them to eat down eat the elderberries that was the plan but we thought that they would at least be able to get a little bit bigger but they can actually stick their head out of this fence and get to these elderberries so they they've ate the elderberries down to stems we didn't uh let them get quite big enough i guess instead of uh the little roots that I started, the little root cuttings, I'm going to have to plant some bigger elderberries here if I want them to survive. Or maybe plant them a little further away. Where the, where, where the garden is, it's, it looks like it's doing well. There's been plenty of rain. The tomatoes are growing. I know to a lot of people that got their garden started earlier, these tomatoes probably look really small. But they are the little seedlings that I started, and they have taken off now that we've got them down in the ground, and that's a good thing. They're against the back of the fence there. I'm going to try to grow them as vertical as I can. I have little cages that I put them in, but I might stake them this year. Seems like staking take, takes less space. And I'm going to keep them pruned so that they grow more vertical. They are indeterminate tomatoes, so, so that all should be really easy to do. The cucumbers and the squash and things that we have here in the middle, the squash are over here on this little patch, and then the cucumbers start right here and go all the way down. We have uh, plenty of them. I worked two little basil in down there, and I had the one bitter melon that come up from the seeds that I started, and it, it's down here. It's not looking quite as healthy as I would like it to. It's right here. It's a little vine like there. The plantain looks pretty good. I've got some little bites in that. I think I've got snails there. There are a lot of snails this year. With a lot of rain comes a lot of snails. The second garden area you can see right here that's just up the hill a little bit from this first garden. It's much smaller, but it, uh, it is where the tree was actually cut down. And so there was a big trunk of that tree left and a lot of, uh, a lot of wood chips that we let decompose. So this is also a little wood chipped garden area. There's a go about eight inches here, maybe more. 
So it ended up having a, a more wood chips in it. And of course, we were glad to have those. Here's what's left of that stump that hasn't decomposed. Donald's just slowly cutting it up, and uh, he has really worked hard getting this, this little area ready. We were glad to see still a little bit of a stump over there. He's burning away. But I think we'll be able to plant that this year. He's still working on getting the fence around it, of course, to keep the dogs and the kids out of it. Now here on the downside of the garden coming down, here's these big elderberries. And there are some shoots that are bigger coming off of it that me and Donald can dig up and try to put them around the chicken pen at least one more time. So we got plenty to work with there. It's not like, you know, we don't. And of course, they're about to finish up their bloom and there's going to be a lot of elderberries this year. Just uh, loads of blooms on these. These are the third year that we, we dug up little uh, shoots. We foraged these elderberries that are back here. We bought the ones that are in front. But we foraged these, and they're about three years old. And they're uh, putting out good blooms, so we're excited about that. We're not too worried about the chickens being able to have more elderberries planted beside their fence because we've got some backup. Well, the wheelbarrow still look, looks like it's been chomped on. It's probably snails doing that. This thing is not filling out quite like I thought it would. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's my choice of flowers. The, um, the sweet, pot sweet potato vine is uh, flowing out the front like I wanted it to. I like the way that looks. It looks like it's pouring out there of the wheelbarrow so that's that's pretty but then the flowers i don't know they're not quite as filling out i don't know if it's uh that they're not getting enough sun here i'm not sure it does have this little canopy of this wisteria hanging over it so it's not in full sun but i thought that i picked plants that would um fill in there and not need as much sun i think maybe it's because we've had so much rain but I'll keep an eye on this, and we'll just see how this continues to fill out. And maybe next year I'll just make different choices in the kind of flowers that I put here. It's not a disappointment. It's just not turning out quite like I thought it would. Now, coming around to the front garden, the angel trumpets are continue to grow, continuing to grow. These gardens are looking pretty full. Now here's a daylily. It's just like the other daylilies, except this is a double daylily. You can see how the flowers are so much fuller than the, the single ones. Here's the single daylily. which is beautiful in itself. And here's the double daylily. And you can just see that the daylily here is twice as thick and has twice as many petals as the single one. Really pretty. Now we've got echinacea blooming. And the pollinators are loving that. This garden is a little bit behind this year from what it normally is. I don't have the zinnias. I don't have a lot planted in here that I normally plant. And some years are just like that. You plan and your intentions are, are more. But it doesn't always work out that way. 
If I could just stay in the garden all the time, I would get much more done. But that's not realistic. All the rain that we've had has really helped everything. It's just really popped up, growing. And in the front, you can see those elderberries that we bought. They were just loaded. These have been here a little longer than the ones that we foraged. This uh, elderberry's probably been here about five years. Which I love it. I think it's a beautiful plant. You see them on the side of the road at this time of the year. It's beautiful and useful. Now this middle garden has just filled in. It's almost unrecognizable compared to a few weeks ago. There's a lot of that passion flower out here. It's not opened up quite yet, but it will here. As the sun comes out, those uh, passion flowers will open up. And to me, they're beautiful and they produce a fruit that you can make jams and jellies from. Right here's one that's already starting to form. Here's the fruit that I've dried out from the years uh, last year that has the seeds already in here. And they propagate pretty easy. These here, I've, they, the rain's got on them, but I'll let them dry out and they'll still be just as good. These things dry prolifically. I mean, they, they're really easy to reproduce, the passion flower. Still enjoying the beautiful Queen Anne's Lace. I'm gonna try to save seed from that this year and see if I can get more to come up. The little poured out bucket is, the plants in it are catching up. They're filling out. I'll have to get out here and do some pruning back. That beautiful milkweed that the butterflies love so much. We're seeing a lot of that on the side of the road at this time of the year, too. Donald and I foraged for this, and it's been in our garden quite a while. I think we have it in three different places, but it's doing the best here where it gets the full sun. We love the beautiful orange flowers and we love that the pollinators, the butterflies and the bees love that. Got some Queen Anne's lace over here by the driveway, still even it, and it's pretty. That passion flower's just wanting to grow wherever it can. Just filled in this garden nicely. The hanging basket looks good. There's been enough water for it. Got more passion flowers opening up over here. Got the beautiful purple cone flowers still growing. I think I can safely cut back a lot of this salvia. A lot of it's just gone to seed, and I think the seeds have already failed. The birds have got the most of them. So I can just get some uh, clippers and just cut back the most of this. It's uh, pretty, pretty finished blooming, I think. There's a few blooms on it, and of course the pollinators love that. They love that sage. to get in here and thin out this passion flower. 
dry it out for tea. It makes a good tea. Loving this red echinacea. This thing has a beautiful smell. Just unbelievably great smell, which was unexpected. I didn't realize it had that good, that beautiful smell to it. Really pretty. Well, I don't think I'll be able to add very much to this garden this year. I mean, it's just about as full as it can be. We'll have more daylilies blooming here on this side. They'll be really pretty on this edge. It's a good hardy plant for the edge of a flower bed. This hanging basket in the shade is doing a little bit better than the one in the middle flower bed, I think. Now this is a red passion flower. It has a red flower on it, but I've yet to see it bloom. I've got it planted here and I've had it for two years, but I've never saw a bloom on it. So I'll be anxious to see if that blooms or not. I'm gonna to try to train it up this trellis. Here's the little plants. I have my little container gardens. Over here by the workstation, I think every garden has a a workstation. It's a little bit of a mess over here. I've definitely got to get out here and clean this out when I can. Clean it up. Organize the stuff so I can get to it when I need to. Here's my little mim mimosas. Yesterday when we were driving to the mountains, I saw a lot of these blooming. They have the prettiest little pink puff of a bloom on them. And they're, they're common here in the south. There's a lot of these mimosas growing. I've got two in pots that Donald dug up for me when we were, he was working out of town. You can see that's there. And I, I have yet to, to determine where I'm going to put those things. And I have a little redbud tree in this container in case anybody I knew would want a redbud tree. But this is like a little potting station over here. I set some of the outdoor plants from inside out here. And of course they love it. They're just taking off. Now these things will grow huge and then when I try to fit them back into the house, I'll, I'll struggle to find room for them in there. I'll have to cut them back, give friends cuttings. It's shady over here. But I've certainly got to to get over here and uh, organize and work in the garden. There's still these things to be planted. I got a few zinnias and I do want to get them planted. I grew those from seed and I hope I can find time to do that soon. I would hate to see those go to waste. I saved those seeds. Well, that winds up the tour of the garden today, showing you what's going on. Included here will be some clips from our day spent at the mountains. We really enjoyed that. So I'll cl include those in today's video. Hey. Hello, you're watching Much Ado About Something and I'm Donna. Today we're up on the mountains. We're visiting my family. 
we're having some celebrations and I thought I'd just show you a few clips. Here's the backyard up here. It's just peaceful and quiet. My sister got me this little cake today for a special celebration. Isn't it adorable? It has little tie dye eyes. <laughs> Looks delicious. Hey, Maddie, you like the hammock? <laughs> Stick it in the ground. Okay. Gimme, can you put me on here? Peaceful, quiet, no neighborhood noises. It's just so relaxing being up here. I'm really enjoying my special day. This is my sister. She loves tie-dye. This is a tablecloth she tie-dyed. Over here is another little towel she's tie-dyed. The kids are just having a ball out here today. Madeline's loving the trampoline. Yeah. Are you going to uh, ride that ring swing like Stormy did? <laughs> oh, she would love that. Look how fast we got done. Thank you for joining me, and like always, until next time.